There is an ecosystem, not unlike that which exists in the ocean, which, if mined correctly, may hold the cures to some of the deadliest diseases in the Western world. It is the most densely populated collection of organisms on the planet and contains more health-giving bacteria than there are fish in the sea. This ecosystem is in the human gut. We all have bacteria living in our gut, and we have many billions. In fact, we have more bacteria in our gut than we have human cells in our bodies. And so we're very much a, a living bacterial colony. And that bacterial colony plays a role, we believe, in our health. One of the first contacts between the environment and the body happens in the gut through the food that we eat. Researchers and food producers are coming together more and more to create food products which can interact with these bacteria in our gut to offer maximum health-giving benefits to the consumer. I very strongly believe that for certain population ailments, particularly those that are diet-related, uh, functional foods will be a far better option than drugs in dealing with these problems. And obviously, uh, this has all to be driven by good science. Irish investigators are exploring this newly discovered ecosystem to identify naturally occurring bacteria in our own bodies to help create new functional foods which may have the power to fight a range of diseases. Well, in a word, what we are doing is bioprospecting in the human gut. Amongst the myriad of different bacteria, good and bad, we are trying to identify those which are most favourable, those which have the properties that can confer maximum health benefit, understand the mechanisms, and then apply that to difficult human disorders. As an island nation with a temperate climate, our lush green fields have ensured that we're famous for our food industry and our dairy produce. Increasingly, their natural nutritional value is also providing the foundation for researchers to develop innovative new foods. Functional food is a food that conveys a health benefit, a specific health benefit to the consumer above and beyond normal nutritional benefits that you associate in the normal course of events with food. And they do this because they contain either microorganisms, beneficial microorganisms, or bioactive ingredients that in some way intervene in a beneficial way in metabolism or in the health of the individual. Well, many natural foods are functional. Like, we all know that porridge and oily fish, fruit and vegetables are good for us. But there are many foods now that have added functionality. In other words, there's an ingredient added that will or may prevent disease or help to lower cholesterol. And that's where it gets complicated for the consumer. For many of us, the concept of bacteria is still a bad thing, something to be fought, and in the case of human health, to be fought with a course of antibiotics. More recently, however, the idea of good bacteria, or probiotics, has taken hold. And this is what we're delivering into the body when we create functional foods. The probiotic concept has been around for 100 years since Eli Metchnikoff. And we know that ingestion of various types of lactic acid bacteria that we often ingest in foods can have positive influences on health and well-being. But we never understood the mechanisms that were responsible for those activities. Today, through a combination of clinicians and basic scientists, we're now getting to the mechanisms by which these bacteria can elicit benefits to health and well-being. Supermarket shelves are full of food products promising us anything from lower stress to improved brain function and longer life. But how can we tell which ones are genuine? I think the consumer is lost much of the time. You know, it's very difficult if you can imagine that one in two products that are coming onto the supermarket shelf now is a functional food. It's terribly difficult to keep on top of all of these new ingredients, you know, their new functions, etc. So 
I think there's a big problem here because we're carrying out excellent science, um, but there's a gap then. There's a gap in terms of consumer information. So there really is an onus now on us to try and convert the science into easy messages that the consumer will understand so that they actually do see a benefit in buying functional foods. Fergus Shanahan is the head of UCC's Elementary Pharmabiotic Centre and is acutely aware of the need for the continuation of strong, validated research. Well, some of the examples of scientifically substantiated functional foods or functional components in consumer goods would be the inclusion of fluoridation in tap water to prevent dental caries, the introduction of plant sterols in dairy spreads to reduce cholesterol. Both of these have been scientifically substantiated. Uh, another one would be the work of Dr. Catherine Stanton identifying conjugated linoleic acid or CLA. Dr. Catherine Stanton of Moor Park Research Centre in Fermoy, County Cork, is looking at a natural bacteria found in cow's milk which produces CLA or conjugated linoleic acid which could have substantial health-giving benefits. CLA is important because um, it's been shown in a variety of studies to have uh, anti-cancer properties and an ability to uh, kill cancer cells. It's also shown to have uh, an ability to modulate the immune system and, be, uh, and have anti-inflammatory properties, which could of course be very important in terms of addressing inflammatory bowel disease. Conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA, is naturally produced as a result of the diet and digestive process in cow's stomachs and is then translated into the milk they produce. Over the last few years, a lot of work has gone on and a lot of papers have come out in the literature demonstrating the benefits of CLA, including research work of Mike Parisa. Um, and now the mechanisms by which CLA exerts anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory properties are pretty well described. And therefore, ways of enriching it in, in, the, in the foods that we eat is, uh, of course, important towards uh, developing beneficial health-promoting foods. Investigators have demonstrated some very positive health-giving properties of CLA, from anti-inflammatory effects in bowel disease to even having the potential to kill certain cancer cells. So they're human colon cancer cells growing um, on a, in a tissue culture, you know, in, um, in the lab. Um, they're, they're growing in the presence of a nutritious media, so they're, they're actually growing cancer cells. And if they were allowed to grow a, a number of further days, we'd have the whole um, plate covered with them because they grow quite rapidly. But if you introduce these same growing cells to a, a molecule of CLA, you can see what happens. They, they, they clump up and they actually die. So if you allow them to <clears throat> continue being incubated, instead of growing to confluency and having, covering the whole plate, they'll actually fall away and they'll be, they'll be gone after a few days. So the CLA is actually killing the cancer cell. Even though these tests showed remarkable results in the lab, the difficulty was that generally CLA was only present in cow's milk in very small quantities. The challenge was to isolate it and grow it in large numbers and then ensure that it would remain stable in a food product like cheese. We worked on a variety of strategies for enriching CLA in cheese um, as part of a European project uh, involving nine, nine countries uh, where we were looking at uh, dietary strategies in animals for enriching CLA in the milk of cows, sheep and goats. Of course in Ireland we were interested in enriching CLA in cows. John Murphy is the head of animal care in Moor Park and works closely with Stanton and the research team. I'm basically an animal nutritionist. I deal with feeding the animal, uh, the type of supplements she gets, and then the milk is, we look at the milk quality. So we're trying to produce a milk with a particular composition that can be used to make a product that will have enhanced health benefits. And of course, CLA is one of the big issues in relation to that. So most of my work is looking at the types of oils to, to include in the diet of the cow, the quality of the pasture in relation to CLA levels, and uh, then evaluating those and seeing which ones give the best response in terms of CLA in the milk. So they're, they're eating away quite well. They're, they seem to like the diet, you know? How much oil is in that one? Having identified a number of feeds which were giving the highest possible levels of CLA in milk, 
Catherine and her team went back to the lab to produce more of this CLA before adding it into the cheesemaking process. The results were excellent. We demonstrated that um, CLA could be enriched in cheese as a result of the, the feeding strategies that I mentioned. We demonstrated that the CLA in cheese is stable during ripening. It didn't negatively affect product quality, an important issue, because if the taste isn't right, people will not eat it. Following substantial human trials which were conducted in Italy, the cheese was proved to be an excellent vehicle for delivering this health-giving CLA. The next stage is to introduce CLA into products for our supermarket shelves. Well, there's a potential now that CLA will be added to various different staple foods. So if it is going to benefit us in terms of its anti-inflammatory and anti-carcinogenic properties, that's going to be tremendous. I mean, it's going to be terribly significant. Following Catherine's success with producing CLA-enriched cheese from cow's milk, she's now turning her attention to the vast ecosystem within the human gut to see if bacteria there could also produce this health-giving CLA. So out of the literally billions of bacteria present in the human gastrointestinal tract, we have identified and isolated uh, certain bifidobacteria. These are good bacteria which can make CLA. And now our job is to link their CLA-producing ability with uh, beneficial properties such as protection against inflammatory bowel disease.